Hello, let's discuss Fishman's Skeletal Maturity Indicator, a topic from Orthodontics. But before we proceed, let's get to understand what exactly is a Skeletal Maturity Indicator. So whenever we have to treat a case of for orthodontics, a case of malocclusion, uh, we need to know the exact skeletal age of the patient. So knowing just the date of birth or the chronological age does not help because uh, every individual has a different growth pattern, different maturation pattern. So it is essential that we need, we need to understand the skeletal age of the patient. So for that, there are certain indicators called as the skeletal maturity indicators and there are various methods to evaluate the skeletal maturity. So the skeletal maturity indicators that are most commonly used one is the hand wrist radiography the others are the cervical vertebrae which is used and even tooth mineralization clinical and radiographic examination of tooth mineralization has also been used to assess the skeletal maturity right and of all these methods hand wrist radiography is one of the most widely accepted method under hand wrist radiography, various people have given various techniques. There is Atlas method by Grulich and Pyle, Jork, Grave and Brown method. There is Singer's method, Hag and Taranga's method and also Fishman's skeletal maturity indicator. So in today's session, we'll discuss about Fishman's skeletal maturity indicators. But before we proceed with uh, Fishman's method, we need to understand a bit of the anatomy of the hand wrist. Okay, so what exactly is the anatomy of the hand wrist? So the entire hand wrist is composed of four groups of bone. So the first group is the ends of the long bone that is the radius. So as you can see here, the radius and the ulna. So how do you understand the positioning of the radius and ulna? So they say when you stand in the anatomical position with your hands down and the palms facing the front in the anatomical position, the ulna is in the medial aspect and radius is in the distal aspect. That's the ideal way to explain it. But for you all to understand it a bit better, just understand that the radius is always uh, in line with the thumb. Okay, so that is the exact positioning of the radius and ulna. So those are the first two bones that comprises of your hand wrist. <clears throat> Other than the radius and ulna, the next set of group, the bones that is there, those are the carpels. So carpels are eight bones that you see over here. Y'all can make out over here. So these bones that you see here those are the carpels so among the carpels we have proximal carpels and distal carpels so always remember one thing proximal carpels are the one which are towards us and distal ones are always away from us so the ones that have marked over here that is the proximal carpels so which are those so the ones that i've underlined over here scaphoid lunate, triquetral and pisiform. Those are the proximal uh, carpels. So one is not uh, visible over here in the image. Okay. So for you all to remember it better, you all can remember the code word school trip. Okay. School trip or any other code that you all can make just to remember things. So of in school trip, S for scaphoid, L for lunate, tri for triquetral and P for pisiform. The next four carpels that is there, these that you see here, those are your uh, distal carpels. They constitute of trapezoid, trapezium, capitate and hamate. Okay. So yeah, capitate and hamate. So those are the distal carpels which are there. After that, in the palm, the bone of the palm uh, are formed by these bones that are called as the metacarpals. They are miniature long bones and then the fingers are constituted by what is called as the phalanges. Okay, And in the phalanges, every finger has three phalanx. One is the proximal phalanx, 
the middle phalanx and distal phalanx the distal and proximal the same applies which we mentioned for the other bones distal is away from us proximal is towards us okay and all fingers except the thumb has three phalanxes the thumb does not have a middle phalanx so that is the basic anatomy of the hand wrist so moving ahead with fishman's skeletal maturity indicator it was introduced or uh, given by a person called as fishman leonard fishman he used four stages of bone maturation so in his four stages uh, before explaining his four stages it is essential that we know what an epiphysis is and what a diaphysis is okay so the diaphysis is the shaft of a long bone and epiphysis is the rounded end of the long bone so if a bone is this way so right so this portion is the diaphysis the rounded end is the epiphysis okay so the four stages of bone maturation that fishman has given the first stage is where the epiphysis is equal to the diaphysis when i say that i am talking about the width of the end the epiphysis and the diaphysis is equal in between there is a stage where there is appearance of a bone called as the adductor sesamoid then comes the epiphysis capping the diaphysis and then comes fusion of epiphysis and diaphysis those are the four stages of bone maturation which are used in fishman's index okay and there are 11 skeletal maturity indicators given by fishman so let's see what exactly comes under fishman's skeletal maturity indicators so as we already mentioned the four stages the epiphysis is equal to diaphysis appearance of the adductor sesamoid epiphysis caps the diaphysis fusion of epiphysis and diaphysis okay so under these four headings we have many stages so the first three stages what you see is the epiphysis will be equal to diaphysis so let us quickly look at which are the first three stages so you can see the image over here 1 2 and 3 correct so what exactly is 1 so before we proceed with that what we need to know is the numbering of the fingers so thumb is 1 then comes to your middle finger is 3 4 and the little finger is 5 okay that's a numbering of the fingers so the first index is pp3 so what is pp3 proximal phalanx of third finger this is the proximal phalanx right correct now moving ahead 2 is middle phalanx of third finger and 3 is middle phalanx of the fifth finger right so an ulta l so that is the first three stages wherein the epiphysis will be equal to the diaphysis okay the fourth one fourth stage that you see that is the appearance of adductor sesamoid of the thumb then comes the next grouping where epiphysis caps the diaphysis it goes as an ulta l over here 5 6 and 7 okay so ulta l from top to the side so dp3 means the distal phalanx of third finger middle phalanx of third finger and the middle phalanx of fifth finger right dp3 mp3 and mp5 then comes the next stage which is the fusion of epiphysis and the diaphysis so under fusion of epiphysis and diaphysis it starts from the distal phalanx distal phalanx of third finger proximal phalanx of third finger middle phalanx of third finger all of the third finger only and then down there is fusion of epiphysis and diaphysis of the radius so that is the stages of fishman's skeletal maturity index what you could do is you could take up your own palm and draw lines so that will be easier for you all to understand it okay so i hope that is clear for you all just go back to the video once more listen to it once more it'll be easy for you you get a lot of questions from this aspect in neat mds uh, examination so once you get the quick concept of it it'll be easy for you all to memorize it thank you